Thanks for joining us. I'm J.R. Stone. We're learning more about a growing controversy involving racist texts sent by the now former officer. They were sent in response to a lawsuit over the shooting of a black man last spring. Tonight, we're hearing... Press one if you think these um, texts ain't racist one bit. I, I don't know. But press one if you think that calling these texts racist is going to end up being laughable will be a strange way to describe what we read. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe they are racist. Maybe the guy is being racist. Controversy involving racist texts sent by the now former officer. They were sent in response to a lawsuit over the shooting of a black man last spring. Tonight, we're hearing from that victim and his civil rights attorneys. They're demanding Officer Mark McNamara face criminal charges ABC 7 News reporter Cornell Bernard has details. It pretty much hurts me and it scares me to know how much hate a person can have in their heart. 20. No, it doesn't, black dude. You, you, you a black guy, you grew up in black Oakland or black San Francisco or black Richmond or black Pittsburgh or black Vallejo or black whatever town you grew up out there in the Bay. You've seen hate. It it should scare anybody who's not black. Who has a window into the way black people treat each other. They should be the ones that are scared. Press one. Not some Negro coming out of the black community. seeing a text and being like, I'm never seeing hate like this before. Come on, man. Cut it out. Cut it out. Y'all got to stop letting black people say stuff like this. And look, the text may be racist, but y'all got to stop letting black people say stuff like this. It pretty much hurts me and it scares me to know how much hate a person can have in their heart. 22-year-old Kayon Green reacting to newly discovered racist text sent by a former San Jose police officer who... Let's see. The other day, this this Blank's lawyer, lawyer is like Mr. McNamara. You know we can still find you guilty of excessive force, right? I'm like, hmm, then sh shit happens, nothing, cool. Because I'm pretty sure the district attorney would have charged me if I used excessive force. But she didn't. And we know who the district attorney is. It's um, the... Uh, <laughs> Pamela Price. Because I didn't use excessive force. Think I give a shit what y'all niggas think? I guess he's saying nigga. I'll shoot you too. Ah. I mean, that's not a professional text. And if he's using the word nigga, I guess it's racist. Because when a white person uses nigga, it's not a term of endearment. Like when we use it towards each other. You know, when we use it towards each other, it's a term of endearment. And oh, yeah, when Hispanics use it, it's also a term of endearment. And oh, yeah, when that white degenerate dude that's, you know, got a hood pass, when he uses it, it's also a term of endearment. But um, oh, yeah, some Asian people, when they degenerates, they can use it too. But um, I mean, if you use the N word, I guess it. I guess it's. I guess by the today's standards, it's racist. Acting to newly discovered racist text sent by a former San Jose police officer who shot him last spring outside La Victoria Taqueria, where Green says he disarmed someone involved in a fight. I feel like the hero of the situation that took place on March twenty seventh. Officer Mark McNamara shot Green as he was backing out of the restaurant with a confiscated gun. In a newly surfaced text dated the day after.
Okay, now that's a mistake, man. I, 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 this is. Don't get me wrong. This is terrible. If if, if what happens here, if he really confiscated a, a gun during a fight, this is my thing, though. He's never seen hate like the cops text. But the cops text is in reference to an incident where he had to take a gun from some fucking moon cricket. Press one. But this is sad. If if he really confiscated that gun and got shot, that's sad. Outside La Victoria Taqueria, where Green says he disarmed someone involved in a fight. I feel like the hero of the situation that took place on March 27th. Officer Mark McNamara shot Green as he was backing out of the restaurant with a confiscated gun. In a newly surfaced text dated the day after the shooting, McNamara wrote to fellow officers. In wanted to carry a gun in the wild, wild west. Not on my watch. The shooting sent Green to the hospital where he faced a long recovery, forced to take a break from his football career at Contra Costa College. His attorney, Adante Pointer, says the racist texts are the final insult. These were disgusting text messages. Vile text messages. Disgust, more disgusting and more vile than the situation in which he had to take a gun from somebody or less vile and less disgusting than whatever was going on in that situation where he had to take a gun from somebody. In some of the texts McNamara said, I'm pretty sure the district attorney would have charged me if I used excessive force, but she didn't because I didn't use excessive force. I'll shoot you too. McNamara said of Green's legal team, they should all be bowing to me and bringing me gifts. Otherwise, he would have lived a life of poverty and crime. In another text writing that he hates black people. McNamara resigned from the... Yeah, this is a racist text, man. I'll give... I'll give I'll give them that. And make sure you take the $5 challenge via PayPal, Cash App, or the Super Chat. I'll give them that. You, you, you've convinced me. Y'all convinced me. These are racist texts. Y'all convinced me. I think it's He said, I hate black people. That is the definition of racist. Whether you, whether you can understand why a, why a cop working in a major democratic city would hate black people whether you can understand or not him explicitly saying i hate black people is racist it is man it's racist it's also racist when black people say i hate white people It should be, at least. It should also be racist when black people say, I hate white people. I'll shoot you, too. McNamara said of Green's legal team, they should all be bowing to me and bringing me gifts. Otherwise, he would have lived a life of poverty and crime. In another text writing that he hates black people. McNamara resigned from the SJPD last week after the text surfaced. Lawyers are demanding McNamara be charged with a hate crime and be decertified as a police officer. You have allowed an avowed racist cop an opportunity to go and seek employment in another community just to terrorize another person on another day. So let's get back to the terrorism aspect. So there's a fight in here where luckily he disarmed the shooter, which is something that's not very common. I mean, like, that doesn't always happen. You don't always disarm the shooter, man. A lot of times, you know, the shooter shoots your ass. Wall backing out after disarming the shooter, the responding officer who's on the scene who probably doesn't know the dynamic. He doesn't know. He probably got a call that there was a guy in there with a gun trying to shoot people. 
he gets there. This is why you don't send um this is why you don't send um mental health aides and social workers to, to, to calls like this. Because the things change, man. Look how much things changed in this situation, man. Let's say this is the shooter in the hoodie with the mask on. They get a call, man. It's a guy in a mask and a hoodie in there menacing, man. Um, or trying to shoot people, trying to rob people, or whatever the hell. Our brave officer shows up. He sees this guy backing out with the gun. He has reason to believe that that's the shooter that he was called for. And he shoots the guy with the gun. Calling this terrorism, man, is a bit of an overstatement, man. I'm just saying. They're demanding McNamara be charged with a hate crime and be decertified as a police officer. You have allowed an avowed racist cop an opportunity to go and seek employment in another community just to terrorize another person on another day. I never thought somebody could just have that much hatred in their heart to where they would want to kill me just because of what I look like. San Jose. So we're looking at a situation where the cop just wanted to kill him because of what he looked like. This situation has been boiled down to the cop wanted to kill him because of what he looked like. I never thought somebody could just have that much hatred in their heart to where they would want to kill me just because of what I look like. San Jose Mayor Matt Mahan says his city has a zero tolerance for racial bias. We are not going to tolerate racism, but we're going to continue working hard every day to build and, and you also looks like you're not going to tolerate testosterone either. Press one. We're not going to tolerate testosterone. Zero tolerance for racial bias. We are not going to tolerate racism, but we're going to continue working hard every day to build a culture of the utmost respect and professionalism within our department. Kayon Green says he's moving forward, hoping to achieve his dream in football. I'm still hoping to make it to the NFL. Cornell Bernard, ABC 7 News. From a D3 school. After being shot. football career at Contra Costa College. It's a term. Contra Costa College. You gonna make it to the NFL from Contra Costa College. <sighs> Good luck, man. Anything's possible. Anything is possible. Don't let me shit on that young man's dream, man. Anything. Five months since a double shooting in West Philadelphia claimed the life of a man while leaving another badly injured. The slain victim's mother believes jealousy could have been the motive as the gunman remains on the loose tonight. Here is Rick Williams with tonight's Crime Fighters Report. Karima Jackson says her son, Ramir, was truly loved in his neighborhood. He was a community person. He do anything to help people around the community. They call him the mirror of Chancellor Street. 
because he was there for everybody. On Tuesday, June 20th, surveillance video captures Ramir, a friend and the suspect, walking along the 5200 block of Walnut Street in West Philadelphia. Wow. Listen, man, all, all this could be true, man. This is a graduation picture, so this gives you no insight into what he dressed like or his appearance or his countenance or his demeanor. The graduation picture gives you zero insight into what you would have seen on a typical day. Press one. And he lives in Blackistan, so everything's relative. So this woman could be right about everything. Everything she's saying could be right. Everything's relative. He do anything to help people around the community. They call him the mayor of Chancellor Street because he was there for everybody. On Tuesday, June 20th, surveillance video captures Ramir, a friend and the suspect, walking along the 5200 block of Walnut Street in West Philadelphia, just after 3 p.m. Shortly after the trio passes the Walnut Food Market, shots were fired. We heard shots right around the corner. Ramir and his friend were both shot. Ramir was pronounced dead at the hospital. His friend was listed in stable condition. Karima so his friend knows what happened. The friend knows what happened. So the friend knows what happened. So I'm, I'm assuming that one of these guys is the shooter, of course. If, if they, they say him and the suspect were walking. He, he was walking with the suspect. Let's see. On Tuesday, June 20th, surveillance video captures Ramir, a friend and the suspect, walking along the 5200 block of Walnut Street in West Philadelphia just after 3 p.m. Shortly after the trio passes the Walnut Food Market, shots were fired. We heard shots right around the corner. Ramir and his friend were both shot. Ramir was pronounced dead at the hospital. His friend was listed in stable condition. Karima believes the falling out with Ramir may have led to jealousy as the motive. A couple of years ago, he stopped hanging around Ramir when Ramir but he's running away. He killed that boy in broad daylight and just walked away. Which one is which one is him? Hey, June 20th. Surveillance video captures Ramir, a friend and the suspect. But that's him with the you see the white socks. That's him with the white socks. That's the one to the left of him. And I think in this video, you can see him raise the gun and shoot him in the back of the head. Because watch when they're walking down the street. This is the this is the this is the suspect. This is Ramir. Watch his hand raise. After 3 p.m. Shortly after the trio. His hand raises. So that's where he shot him. Boom! Right in the back. Or in the back of the head. Broad daylight. And then you got some sun word coming on the news talking about some. I never seen evil like this in my life, referring to a text. Or some sun word seeing a noose somewhere. One of them one of these sun words gonna see a noose uh, or a rope, a, a rope somewhere. I've never seen anything as evil as that in my life. And this is the stuff that they see on the regular. These are daily occurrences they see on the regular or hear about or have happened to close relatives. On Tuesday, June 20th, surveillance video captures Ramir, a friend and the suspect, 
walking along the 5200 block of Walnut Street in West Philadelphia just after 3 p.m. Shortly after the trio passes the Walnut Food Market, shots were fired. We heard a shot right around the corner. Ramir and his friend were both shot. Ramir was pronounced dead at the hospital. His friend was listed in stable condition. Karima believes the falling out with Ramir may have led to jealousy as the motive. A couple of years ago, he stopped hanging around Ramir when Ramir said, if you can't better yourself, then I can't be hanging around you. The city of Philadelphia is offering up to $20,000 in reward money for information that leads to the arrest and conviction of the person responsible. All you have to do is call the Citizens Crime Commission. Why doesn't the other guy get, who got shot tell us who this guy is? All it would take is the other guy who got shot but survived to say, hey, man, it was Johnny, man, or it was Pookie, or it was Ray Ray. Never mind. Let me let me not answer ask that question because that would be snitching. That would be snitching. So they asking for some. Let's peep this, y'all. Peep this. Peep this. They have a person who who was on the scene who knows exactly who this guy is. Who won't cooperate. But they're. They're asking for someone else to come forward and cooperate. They're asking for someone else to come forward and cooperate. Don't worry about the chat um, being censored, man. The chat ain't, ain't, ain't nobody censored. Only, only, only. YouTube got some things you can't, you can't, you got to word them a certain way. That's YouTube, man. I can't do nothing about that, man. All you can do is hit the PayPal, hit the Cash App, hit the Super Chat, or hit the like button, or visit the merch store, or join the Patreon, or something like that. But as far as um, complaining about um, the chat, what, what, what can you do about it, man? That's YouTube's rules, man. Go over the rumble, man. We got um what 42 people over on Rumble watching, man. Funeral services were held today for Keyshawn Galt, the Buffalo sewer worker who was shot and killed while in a truck with two co-workers that came under fire as it traveled down the I-199 days ago. Some of his co-workers were among the mourners who remembered the 22-year-old Galt as a sensitive young man who often put others before himself. This is heavy on us, super heavy on us, because that was our little brother. Even though he was our little brother, he looked after every single one of us while we was together when we got here. If it was something small, going into the store, coming out with four bags of chips, because we was all together. We didn't ask for it. That's just what he did. State police say they've recovered what they believe was the vehicle used in the drive-by shooting that took Galt's life and wounded two of his co-workers. However, no arrests have been made. Neighborhood in shock after a 10-year-old boy is seriously wounded when police say a trio of gunmen opened fire into the Southside home he shares with his family. A 10-year-old getting shot, this don't normally happen over here. Like, nobody. Who believes that? Who believes that? 